Imagine a world where humans can explore the red planet, Mars, as easily as they can visit their neighbors. A world where they can breathe in Martian atmosphere, feel the cold wind on their faces, and marvel at the sight of two moons in the sky. A world where they can build a new civilization, a second home for humanity on the dusty surface of an alien world. In this video, we unveil the groundbreaking grand plan in six steps that scientists have crafted to transform the red planet into a habitable paradise. In the not too distant future, remarkable advancements in space exploration, technology, and artificial intelligence will make the once seemingly impossible a reality. However, the question is, how will we transform Mars from a barren wasteland into a green and blue world? What are the challenges and benefits of colonizing the red planet? Welcome to Most Amazing Channel, where we explore wonders of the cosmos and beyond. The plan. Let us delve on a journey from the current state of Mars to a habitable planet. We will outline the six steps involved in the gradual transformation of Mars, focusing on each step's significance and its role in making the planet livable. Terraforming Mars is not an easy task. It requires overcoming enormous obstacles such as lack of water, oxygen and magnetic field, extreme temperatures and radiation, and the long distance and isolation from Earth. But it also offers incredible opportunities for exploration, discovery, and survival of humanity. Step 1. Human Presence The first step in terraforming Mars is to establish a human presence on the planet. This will require sending multiple missions with crew and cargo to build a base and conduct scientific experiments. The most promising vehicle for this purpose is the SpaceX Starship, a reusable rocket that can carry up to 100 tons of payload and 100 passengers to Mars. The initial habitat for humans on Mars will be a modular structure that can provide protection from the harsh environment, as well as comfort and functionality. The habitat will have multiple rooms for living, working, sleeping, and recreation. It will also have systems for life support, power generation, communication, and waste management. Step 2. Martian Resources The second step in terraforming Mars is to make use of its resources and adapt to its conditions. This requires developing technologies and strategies for extracting water, producing oxygen, growing food, and recycling materials. It also requires designing spacesuits and vehicles that can withstand the low pressure, high radiation, and dust storms on Mars. To extract water from the frozen ice caps and the underground reservoirs on Mars, powerful drills and heaters are needed that can melt and pump the water to the surface. Oxygen production is also needed from the carbon dioxide that dominates the Martian atmosphere, which is too thin and toxic for humans to breathe. Genetically modified plants or algae can be used that can photosynthesize and release oxygen into the air. Or machines can be used that can split water into hydrogen and oxygen using electricity. To grow food on Mars, artificial environments are needed that can support plants and animals. Greenhouses and hydroponic systems are needed that can provide adequate light temperature, humidity, and nutrients for plants. Insects or other animals are also needed that can provide protein and other nutrients for humans. Organic waste and water recycling are needed from these systems to reduce the need for resupply missions from Earth. To recycle materials on Mars, efficient and sustainable ways are needed to reuse the metals, plastics, and other materials that are brought or produced on the planet. Modular and adaptable structures are needed that can be easily repaired or repurposed. Local materials such as regolith, Martian soil, or chitin, a substance derived from insects, can be used to create concrete or metal alternatives for building. 
To adapt to the conditions on Mars, spacesuits and vehicles are needed that can protect the explorers from the harsh environment of the planet. They need to be lightweight and durable, as well as capable of regulating temperature, pressure, and oxygen levels. They also need to be resistant to radiation, dust storms, and micrometeorites that can damage them. Psychological and social support are also needed for the human explorers who will face isolation, stress, and boredom on Mars. Step 3. Atmosphere Control The third step in terraforming Mars is to increase its atmospheric pressure and temperature. This will require releasing greenhouse gases that can trap heat and create a warmer and thicker atmosphere. One of the most radical and controversial methods for doing this is to detonate nuclear bombs on the Martian polar caps, which contain large amounts of frozen water and carbon dioxide. Another method for heating up Mars is to use orbital mirrors or satellites that can reflect sunlight or emit microwaves to the surface. These devices can target specific regions or areas that need more warming, such as the poles or the equator. A more gradual and sustainable method for increasing the Martian atmosphere is to use industrial processes that can generate greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, methane, ammonia, or sulfur hexafluoride. These processes can include burning fossil fuels, manufacturing fertilizers, or mining minerals. The goal of these methods is to raise the atmospheric pressure and temperature of Mars to a level that can support liquid water and life. The ideal pressure and temperature for Mars would be around 1 bar and 15 degrees C, which are similar to Earth's average conditions. Step 4. Water Cycle The fourth step in terraforming Mars is to create a hydrological cycle, which means having water in different forms and locations on the planet. This will require melting the ice caps, extracting water from underground sources, and importing water from asteroids or comets. Another aspect of creating a hydrological cycle is to have water vapor in the atmosphere which can form clouds and rain. This will require having enough water on the surface and in the air, as well as having a stable temperature and pressure that can prevent water from freezing or evaporating. Step 5. Introduction of Life The fifth step in terraforming Mars is to introduce life, which means having plants, animals, and microorganisms on the planet. This will require finding or engineering species that can survive and thrive in the Martian environment, as well as transporting them to the planet. One of the first forms of life to be introduced to Mars will be microorganisms, such as lichens or cyanobacteria. These organisms can perform photosynthesis, which means they can use sunlight and carbon dioxide to produce oxygen and organic matter. They can also help fix nitrogen, which is essential for plant growth. Another form of life to be introduced to Mars will be plants, such as grasses or mosses. These plants can also perform photosynthesis as well as stabilize the soil and prevent erosion. They can also provide food and shelter for animals. The next form of life to be introduced to Mars will be animals, such as insects or worms. These animals can help decompose organic matter, recycle nutrients, and pollinate plants. They can also serve as food for larger animals. The final form of life to be introduced to Mars will be vertebrates, such as fishes or birds. These animals can help diversify the ecosystem, create new niches, and enhance the beauty and diversity of life on Mars. The goal of these methods is to create a biosphere on Mars that can support a variety of life forms and maintain a balance between producers, consumers, and decomposers. The ideal biosphere for Mars would be similar to Earth's biosphere, which has millions of species and billions of individuals. Step 6. Civilization The final step in terraforming Mars is to make it a home for humans, which means having a large and diverse population of people living, working, and playing on the planet. This will require creating a society and a culture that can adapt to the Martian environment, 
as well as ensuring the health and well-being of the inhabitants. One of the aspects of making Mars a home for humans is to build infrastructure and facilities that can provide comfort, convenience, and security. This will include housing, transportation, education, health care, entertainment, and commerce. Another aspect is to establish governance and laws that can regulate the activities and interactions of the people. This will include creating a political system, a legal system, a tax system, and a defense system. The final aspect of making Mars a home for humans is to develop culture and traditions that can express the identity and values of the people. This will include creating art, music, literature, religion, sports, and holidays. The goal of these methods is to create a civilization on Mars that can coexist with Earth. This will, of course, take time depending on the growth and development of the population. The ideal civilization for Mars would be similar to Earth civilization, which has billions of people and thousands of cultures. This is the grand plan of terraforming Mars that scientists have finally revealed. It is an ambitious and audacious project that will take decades and centuries to complete, but it is also a visionary and inspiring project that will expand our horizons and ensure our survival. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and share it with your friends who may be interested in the future of Mars. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos on space, science, and technology.